All right, YouTube, I've got another video here from Windows 7. Would not be my first at all, but I believe this is the build. This is the first video I've made in build 7000, which is now officially beta 1. Uh, I believe this build came out late December, early January, late December 08, early January of 09. So uh, today is Wednesday, January 21st, 2009. So it's fairly new. Anyways, I'm going to do a review of the Euro interface. Euro interface first came about in Windows Vista. And before that, in Windows XP, Microsoft had something called Luna, which was that blue interface with the green moldy start button. So here we are. It doesn't look a whole lot different than Windows Vista. In fact, I still have Windows Vista and Windows XP Media Center Edition installed on this particular machine because both operating systems, well, bring back very good and very bad memories, but, you know, I like to try boot, so here we are. Anyways, let's start by opening up the Start menu here. Now, it's a bit more transparent than Windows Vista, and then if we go down and look at the taskbar, it's a little bit thicker. It doesn't have that line running through the middle with a darker color on the bottom, and I think it looks altogether better. Now, that's personal opinion. If you didn't want it to be thicker like that, and you wanted it to look more like Windows Vista, you could right-hand click, go to Properties, check the box that says Use Small Icons, and click on Apply. And then it looks a little bit more like Windows Vista. But I'm not a Windows Vista fan anymore, so I am not doing that. I can set that back. Okay, so if you see all my little icons down here in the Start menu, or the Start, well, the taskbar, sorry, they're not open. These are pinned applications. Before, we've been able to pin things to the Start menu. Now we can also pin them to the taskbar, which is really rather nice. We can either drag them down, put them where we want, or right-hand click and select Pin to the taskbar. When they're in the taskbar, we can click, drag, move them around, nice little animation there. Looks good. Let's open Internet Explorer 8 Beta, which came in Windows 7 Beta. Here we are. We come down here, we highlight that, we get that little preview pane. It kind of sneaks up from the bottom of the window there. It looks pretty good. Let's open another tab and go to Apple.com, which is going to take a while because I'm in my basement and my router's upstairs two floors and my internet's been messed up. So whatever, I guess we're just going to get this new tab window or Yahoo. That's cool too. Then if we come down here and highlight that, now we have two because there's two tabs open. Now they're in the same little block. They're not separated. If we highlight one, it takes us to one tab. If we highlight the other, it takes us to the other tab. We don't have to click them. Just mouse over it, highlight it, whatever you want to call that. Really nice for a preview pane if you've got many open. It'll put as many as you have open in the same bar from Internet Explorer down here. Now let's open one Google Chrome, which is my default browser. Here's one of these. Let's, let's go in my mail. And then we'll go back over here to Internet Explorer. There's both of those windows still there. Then if we move over to Google Chrome, it's kind of a very sliding, nice, smooth, easy transaction. Really, I noticed this from a Mac. And Macs have always been beautiful, if you can call a computer beautiful. But um, as far as productivity-wise, I think a Mac's crap. But I'm not that experienced in the Mac field, so don't leave nasty comments, please. But I do like that animation. When a window's open, we can still move it around, reorganize, which is really nice. Get all, the, get all of them in one place. Organization, I do like that. been waiting for that for a while. If you do not like... Oh, and there we have a glitch. Okay. <laughs> All right. If you do not like how every window is in a box without the title and text of what it is, we can right hand click on the taskbar, go to properties, then you're going to see taskbar buttons. Click on that and then select never combine or um, always com or, uh, combine when taskbar is full. And then you're going to get the little names here. But I don't like that because that's not Windows 7 anymore. <sighs> okay, then we have something called, I believe they are um, 
quick launch menus or something like that. If we come and we right hand click on something there, then we get this little menu of recently opened documents, recently viewed photos, or anything, anything like that, which is really quite nice and I like that feature. Um, like in Microsoft Word, I right hand click on that, here are some of my recent documents. Now I don't know if this one's still on my hard drive, and apparently it is. That's for school. But that's kind of nice instead of having to go up here, documents, my documents, and searching for it in there. In the bottom right hand corner, there's this little place that looks like the start menu had a glitch and it didn't quite go all the way over. And the first time I saw that, that's actually what I thought it was. <clears throat> then I kind of out, found out online, found out on YouTube, and found out by using that, that is a preview pane over to the desktop. So if we open up Internet Explorer here, we go down, we just mouse over that. It's going to show us the windows we have open, in which case that's just the one in the upper right hand corner of my screen, which is Cam Studio, my screen recording software. It's going to show, it's going to outline that, and then inside we see that glass, kind of like from Vista. That's just a preview if you're trying to change your desktop background or something like that. Really quite nice. Then if we click it, instead of just mousing or highlighting over it, then it actually takes us there, and now it's interactive. And I do like that. So all in all, I think they they did a really good job. Much more transparent. Obviously, that's still changeable. Right and click on the desktop, personalize. Go to window color at the bottom, and then we can make it red, which looks hideous, or orange. Change the color intensity, or just transparent, which is always good. But anyways, Microsoft has done something right now. They haven't really done anything right since XP or Microsoft Tinker, if you know that game in Windows Vista Ultimate with Ultimate Extras. Um, another thing I want to throw in about Windows 7 here is this particular machine is my IBM or Lenovo ThinkPad Z61T. I have 2 gig of RAM, DDR2, it's, I think it's 800 megahertz, it's good RAM, 4 gigahertz processor, Intel, um, two cores, two gigahertz, four meg L2 cache. It's a relatively high-end machine, not as much as maybe your Dell XPS or your ThinkPad T. I think that's the 61 or the X300 for portability. But anyways, Windows 7 uses a lot less RAM, which is really good. I put Windows 7 on an older ThinkPad I have. It's a T42. It has a half a gig of RAM and a 1.6. 75 gigahertz Intel Pentium M740. Yes, I have all this memorized, I know. And it was actually using about 40%. So, I mean, if we can have Windows using, what would that be, like 225 meg of RAM just sitting there? Obviously, I didn't have transparency. I didn't have any applications open. But I would recommend 2 gig or 1.5 gig as a minimum for Windows 7. More is always better in the RAM field. So thanks for watching. <clears throat> I hope you learned something. That's always good. And um, I'll see you later.